Hello! Today on Dan's Model Works, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This, as you can see from the box top, is by Monogram, the classic Packard Boat Tail Speedster. Now, looking down here in the side of the box, you can see there's a little bit of masking tape on here. The reason for this is this kit has already been started. This kit was started by my dad probably oh at least 33 years ago and he got maybe a third of the way through it and for whatever reason eh, he lost interest in it and that does happen now I was up in his attic a couple of months ago and um, I took a couple of kits out of his attic with his reluctant blessing and mainly he said, well, if you're going to take them, make sure you finish them. Make sure you're going to build them. So, um, I thought we'd take a look inside and see what we got here. This is going to be my next project, is um, hopefully finishing this off. Looking inside the box. Look at the instructions a few minutes from now. Now, as you can see, basically everything was just put in the box as if he was going to start working on it again tomorrow. We have the wheels. This one obviously is missing its front. Look at those awesome wire wheels. Tires are a little shiny. And here's a blast from the past. My father, a lifelong long smoker, at one time used to uh, make his own cigarettes. And he used to buy his own tobacco to put inside the tubes. Kmart. $4.99. At any rate, uh, both he and I used to put our tube cement, our tester's tube cement, in one of these old lids. And use a toothpick for spreading it. This is almost kind of like a, a time capsule here. Now let's look at where we are. This sprue has the interior tub. And it doesn't look like he's done anything with that yet. Now, when I first took this out, I was thinking that he had brush painted this, but upon turning it over, I don't know if the camera picks this up, you can see that there is a bluish overspray over top of the original brown plastic. So he must have had a can of blue spray paint. My dad did not have an airbrush. Set that aside. And it looks like the paint scheme he was going to use as a main body was going to be silver with blue trim. Silver looks pretty good. It looks like he was hand painting the, the highlights in blue paint. And just like me, he was trying to freehand it. Here's the rest of the body. This side has doesn't have the highlights on it yet. And this side does. I'm not sure if I'm going to complete this using the silver with blue highlights. We'll have to think about that. And now we have the chassis. A nicely detailed engine. And it looks like all of the chassis parts, the suspension, and everything were separate pieces. I'm not sure if I'm happy with the high gloss paint. I think I might end up using a mixture of gloss and, or sorry, a mixture of semi gloss and black for a lot of these parts. Set that aside. Here we have the transparent sprue. Those headlights are nice. We have the chrome sprue right here. 
These parts look fairly nice. The radiator, I think, could probably stand with a black wash just to give it a lot of depth. And we can see those are the, the headlights right there. Not much left on this sprue. Basically just the dashboard and the steering wheel. One more sprue to go. Not many parts left on this one either. We have some loose parts in here. Looks like the firewall. And these look like the spare tires. Back in those days, you got two. And he has a covering in flat light blue. That looks fairly nice. This looks like it's obviously the folding top. Here's another one of the wheels and the missing wheel front from earlier. So I don't think we're missing any parts. My main decision I think is going to have to be, am I going to stick with the silver body or do something different? I don't want to stray too far from what he had in mind for completing this model. Maybe what I'll do is I'll mock some of the parts up before getting into it. Just that I'd show you the instructions. If we look up here, we can see the original copyright was 1975. And then it was basically renewed in 1979. If you look carefully, you can see the 1979 is in a slightly different typeface. So obviously in 1979, they re-released this kit and really didn't make any changes other than to renew the copyright. And let's just see what uh, state-of-the-art monogram instructions were from 1975. There we go. It's not really a booklet, but a fold-out. As you can see, the chassis had to be completely built up from separate parts. Something you don't usually see these days. Flip it over. This is what today would be known as a skill level three kit. Even though a lot of the assembly is done, I'm going to still have to be referring to these instructions to make sure that I've found and used all the parts that were necessary. Okay, here you can see I've mocked up the parts. Just basically putting together the parts that are capable of being set together on their own. The spare tires just sitting in their wells. Doesn't look like there were any major fit issues. Mind you, I haven't put the interior tub in yet. Now, even though the wheels are together, if we look carefully at the wheel spindles, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little lip on the end. These wheels, it looks like they're a pressure fit. So I'm thinking once you put them on, they're not coming off. So I really don't want to put the wheels on yet. Like I said before, my, my biggest decision is going to be, am I going to keep the body silver? I'm really tempted to go with a... Uh, a medium gloss blue. That's what I'm thinking of doing. And then maybe the trim that's blue here may be making that silver. Going back to the box top, we can see that the body as they depict it 
was a lighter color than the fenders, but the accent pieces were a darker color. So maybe if I go with a medium blue, the accents would be best being a dark blue. Well, we'll have to see. Now, as you can see, I've already started doing some of the work here. One of the first things I did was I installed the firewall. Whether I change the color or not, this really needs to be on here. Um, mainly so that it can be the same color as the rest of the body. Generally, a firewall is painted at the same time as the rest of the body. So, nice detail on here, really. There's, there's you know, quite a few bits and baubles. It should be nice once they're picked out in different colors. As you can see from the frame, I took the engine out because I'm going to be painting that something close to Packard green. So that'll make that a whole lot easier. I also removed the exhaust. If we look carefully, you can see that the muffler was two pieces and you can see where they've been joined up. So I plan on sanding that out, putting a little bit of filler in and, uh, as well as that, the end of the exhaust pipe, I'm going to hollow that out so it looks more like a pipe than a rod. And the chassis itself is pretty much down to what I want it to be for painting. So any further ado, I've got some semi-gloss testers black. And I own probably seven or eight paintbrushes, and I do 90% of my painting with two. So, most of this is going to be semi gloss black, but I will be coming in to do some parts in flat black and a little bit in gloss black as well. Now we're finishing painting up the frame. Back end of the frame was a little bit more difficult to paint because my dad had already painted part of it gloss black, and of course, when wet, semi gloss paint looks an awful lot like gloss paint. So I'm sure I'm going to have to come back later and touch up some of the some of the parts that end up looking glossier than they should. If we come and look at the the front end, you can see that I haven't painted the wheel backs and the brake assemblies or the drive shaft. I think I'm going to use Humbrol gun metal for those parts. It's nice and dark, but yet it's metallic. And I think that will show nicely behind those nice wire wheels. There we go. Semi gloss black. Okay, I've sanded down the drive shaft to smooth out the various mold lines and things. I'm going to reinstall it on the chassis now. It needs to be slid into this hole and then back into the differential. And we'll just run a little bit of glue in there. Make sure that the glue has, in fact, attacked the plastic, and it's going to hold. Now, as for that exhaust, even though it was glued together, it was glued together with tube cement, so I'm not exactly confident as to its ability to stay together, so I'm just going to run a fair amount of liquid cement on it. And I know that will stay together. Okay, now I'm just about to paint some Humbrol gun metal on here. This is a very dark metallic. 
and I'm going to be painting the brake assemblies and probably the drive shaft with this. Hopefully this should look good behind those nice wire wheels we've got there. And we're almost done painting the gunmetal now. You can see the front brake assembly has been painted. I'm assuming that these are supposed to represent drum brakes. I certainly don't have any caliper detail on them and certainly wouldn't be appropriate for a car built in the 1920s. And the drive shaft has also been painted gunmetal. And I did leave the rear axle in differential as a gloss black assembly. I might still paint it a flat or semi-gloss, but I just wanted to give the impression that it was a separate part and that everything it wasn't all one big omni thing all made from the same material coming from the same shop. I'm just finishing, just scraping off the mold line here. Most of the time, this is all it takes to get a mold line off. It's just to scrape with the edge of your knife. Now we're going to do something about this grungy seam here. A little bit of putty on here. Most of this, of course, will be sanded off. And if I turn this up like this, hopefully you'll be able to see that it's now been hollowed out. Okay, now as you can see, I've sanded where I puttied the muffler, and now this is ready for paint. And I think I'm going to be painting the main pipe here. I think I'm going to paint that silver. And the muffler, just to give it a little bit of contrast, I'm going to be painting that steel. Okay, I've put a clothespin on my muffler here, just to give me some place to hold it. And not only that, when I'm done painting it, I'll have something to set it down on. So, I think later on when I put this into the car, I might just put a little bit of rust dry brushing, just where this pipe goes up to the exhaust manifold. I know this would have been a re a restored car, but even if it's been driven a little bit, this pipe would tend to start to corrode up at the at the head end of it. So, and finishing up. A little bit in the end. And we can set this aside to dry. Now we finish up the exhaust by painting the muffler steel. Even though both steel and silver are a metallic and shiny paint, this helps to make the whole model look a little more realistic. Okay, now it's time to do something about this engine. 
I think I'm going to leave the oil pan either gloss black or maybe I'll make it semi-gloss black. Um, I should clarify that when I looked on the internet, um, post Second World War, there seems to be some dispute as the color of uh, Packard engines. Some people say that they should be gray. Some people say that they're green. But pre-war, they certainly, it seems that green was the color. Um, however, uh, one thing everyone seems to agree on is that if... That, uh, that the green varied. That sometimes it was darker, sometimes it was lighter, sometimes it was a grayish green, and sometimes the same car could have components in its engine that were slightly different colors of green. So, that suggests that there were some vagarities in their, um, in their supply of green paint. So, I'm not going to worry about getting paint on parts that I'm going to be making other colors. I'll touch them up later. I'm going to be repainting all of this brighter silver, more of a steel color. And some of it's actually going to be that gun metal as well. So if it looks like I'm not being particularly careful, well, that's all right, because I'm going to be touching this up later. Okay, we've got most of the green paint on. And as I said earlier, I'm not worried about getting paint on any of the other parts. I would have preferred to have painted all this separately, but it does seem to be fairly well stuck together. And I'm basically working from the inside out. I'm doing the engine block, and then I will paint the transmission later. And then I'll touch up the paint on the oil pan, and then I'll go on to all these extra bits that are on the outside here. And at that point, I'm going to worry about being perfect and having, you know, no paint where it's not supposed to be or anything like that. Okay, now I'm going to paint the transmission. A slightly different green, more of a gray-green. I believe this is Marine Corps green. And that will help to keep things looking interesting, but at the same time, uh, stick with the Packard painting of components of green from pre-Second World War. Okay, now I'm just finishing up painting some steel parts on the engine. The fan. And it looks like a gear housing at the front, right there. The intake manifold. Uh, the exhaust manifold, I think we're going to paint that gun metal, just because it would be a little darker, more robust metal. Just plain steel. We still have to paint the pulley and this belt. And I'm thinking this is a horn. Because I don't see a visible horn on the outside of the model anywhere. So I'm thinking I'm going to break that off. I'm going to clean it up, hollow out the end of it, and then I'll reinstall it. Now I'm just finishing painting up that uh, piece I identified as being a horn and we'll remount that to the side of the engine because I can't find any any references to an actual horn being mounted on the outside of this car in the instructions of the box I'm not sure if you can see it but I hollowed out the end of it so that it does actually have the real appearance of a horn so we'll get that mounted on the outside of the engine. All right, I'm just finishing up painting the silver parts on the engine. 
as opposed to the steel parts and opposed to the gun metal parts and opposed to the chrome parts. I think there's only one color left I've got to paint and that'll be the exhaust manifold. I'm going to be painting that gunmetal because I believe that probably would have been a, a fairly heavy chunk of cast iron. And would have got discolored pretty quickly. I also painted the pulley and the belt running to it and I touched up these bolts on the top pictures I've seen they were at least on restored cars they're you know a bright silver color now we're just finishing painting off the exhaust manifold some humbral gun metal We'll set this aside to dry, do a couple of touch-ups on it. Okay, this pretty much concludes part one. We've got the chassis all repainted and detailed up. You can probably see there's some metal brake lines running along the side, some sort of cables. I'm not exactly sure what they would be on the real car, but they're on either side. The Engine has been painted, a facsimile of Packard Green. There's the front of the engine. And at the end of the video, I'm going to have a couple before and after pictures to show you. See you in part two.